Hello, well, back to you into today's video. We're going to have a look at the Weather Next Week 10 Days for today's second video. Actually, we released 5D forecasts earlier on today. You can find that video on the homepage and also there's a written version you get that from buttons at the top of the pages at Gazov. It's so going to be a uh, very warm and dry five days coming up. Starting off a little bit cooler, but temperatures will be warming up over the weekend. And that probably sets us up for a heat wave next week. Today's second video update will uh, go over again all of the detail in terms of the latest model runs for next week's weather, which is looking potentially very warm, if not hot, and uh, really dry weather as well. Also have a look at the Beijing Climate Centre for the next 40 days. That can take us to the end of July. So we'll get on with the video. I'm going to start off by having a look at the central England temperature. So we currently stand at a very warm 15.9 degrees uh, provisional up to yesterday, 19th of June. Uh, two degrees, an anomaly of two degrees above average for June 2018. Uh, now, this is going to drop down a little bit over the next couple of days because we have got some cooler air uh, seeping its way southwards at the moment. So it's going to lead us to a couple of cooler days and uh, particularly notable at night, actually, a couple of much cooler and fresher nights. So this will tick down temporarily, but from the weekend, I mean, through next week to the end of the month, I think it's pretty much all the way uh, up for the CT. So I'm struggling to see the centering temperature this year coming out uh, for June uh, under 16 degrees. I think we'll be over 16 degrees uh, for this month, for this June's CT. That will be a very, very warm uh, June indeed uh, and not only has it been really uh, warm it's also been very dry across much of the country as well so this is the rainfall uh, amount that's fallen uh, in terms of um, the average uh, up to the 18th of June uh, I saw this uh, on Twitter and uh, from UK Met uh, and really really dry uh, June down in the south so far, with many southern parts of the country from the Midlands down into the south having 20% uh, uh, less uh, rainfall uh, than average, 20% of average. And even further north, it has been a little bit more unsettled. We're only at sort of 75 to 100% of average across parts of northern England and southwestern Scotland to eastern Scotland, very dry. Northern Ireland, very dry. Northern England, very dry, but the driest conditions for Wales and down through central southern parts of uh, England been really really dry so far and I'm not seeing much sign of that being alleviated before the end of month so this will be an exceptionally dry June as well as being a very very warm uh, June as well. As I say, no sign that this is going to be alleviated anytime soon, this dry weather. So these are the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're going to Chorley in uh, Lancashire today. So the red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average for Chorley. Uh, and that's how I get a bit of a tick down in the temperature coming up over the next couple of days. Starting off quite warm today, but uh, tomorrow and Friday will be cooler. But then from the weekend, you'll see very quickly those temperatures are lifting back up. So by the time we get through to next week, it looks like we're going to get a heat wave. Temperatures are going up uh, very close to 15 Celsius, 850 HPA in the upper atmosphere. That takes us through uh, to the end of July. That's uh, the end of July just there. By which time the temperatures are lowering slightly. So the first week of July, possibly see the temperature easing back a bit. But it's still significantly warmer than average even then. And uh, as well as being very warm to hot, also really dry. Look at the precipitation spikes or the lack of them uh, really through to the end of the month. This is the last day of June just here. One or two precipitation spikes. It looks like they're outliers uh, really and essentially that's keeping things dry pretty much from start to finish. And further on we go, we do find one or two precipitation spikes appearing, so right at the very end, have got a few precipitation spikes there. Um, but, I mean, their outliers are a very long way off, and uh, certainly within the week to 10-day time frame, you have to say that is an exceptionally dry ensemble chart, as well as being uh, very warm too, in Chile. These are the surface temperatures 
and it turns to be ensembles for Chorley. So starting off cooler, we know we're cooling down now. The cool air has got into northern England. So next couple of days will be cooler, but then over the weekend into next week there, we go lifting the temperatures up into kind of like the uh, mid-20 Celsius at least. And these do undercut the temperatures a little bit, by the way. So uh, we're in for a big warm-up as we get through into uh, next week. and see clear evidence of that. Temperatures will be warming up very substantially through the course of next week. And I reckon 30 degrees is uh, very likely down in the south. And I wouldn't rule out 32, 90 Fahrenheit for some parts of southern and southeastern England during the course of next week, based on the charts that we're looking at at the moment. Temperature anomalies are looking like that for the week. These are starting to warm up. I said that uh, the further on we get through this week, I expect these to warm up. So they're beginning to uh, warm up. Temperature anomaly now from the 20th of June through the 28th, coming out above average for the UK. And I expect those to train warmer over the coming uh, days. Precipitation anomalies really dry. Look at that. From the 20th, 28th of June, substantially drier than average for the UK, for Ireland, for France as well. So we're in for a really warm and dry uh, spell of weather over the uh, next week, most definitely. That's how the GFS is doing the Saturday then. The high pressure beginning to return from the west. So those cooler north northwesterly winds that are feeding down across the country today, they're cut off by Saturday. They're pushed off into Denmark and uh, Germany. We start to see high pressure ridging back in from the Atlantic. So but by Sunday, that high pressure is centering itself right over top of the UK. It means that it will be dry and warm throughout the weekend. In fact, turning warmer uh, through the weekend. It's that high pressure that's going to bring us the chance of a heat wave uh, next week. So that's Monday with the high pressure again centering itself right over top of the country. By Tuesday, the high pressure is just beginning to drift a little bit out towards the east. And that's starting to pull up this hot air from the south and from the southeast too. So through the course of next week, we find the temperatures increasing as the wind turns into this southeasterly uh, direction. Pressure is quite weak down to the south, so it might be weak enough just to spark off a few isolated thunderstorms for southern and southwestern parts of the country. But I think the emphasis is on very dry weather through next week and hot weather too. That's how things look at the end of next week, running up towards day 10, uh, Friday 29th of June. And the high pressure, it just continues to be sitting very close to the country. Nothing is uh, moving through. We haven't got the jet stream to push that high pressure away, so it just continues to sit there across the UK and much of Northern Europe, and it will be really hot by then. I reckon 32 Celsius is not impossible by the end of next week. That is day 10, Saturday the 30th of June, and the heat wave is continuing. Uh, there's the upper air temperatures. They're looking really warm to hot across uh, much of the country, really hot down across France as, as well. So we go just a little bit beyond uh, day 10. We go through to Sunday, the 1st of July, and just try to turn a bit thundery then. Low pressure trying to come in from off the Atlantic. We're trying to bring a thundery low up from Biscay. So perhaps growing threat of some thunderstorms uh, there, possibly alleviating the dry weather and turning things a little bit cooler. Um, but really quickly, that doesn't really come to anything. And really quickly, we are back to high pressure. I talked about this in a video yesterday, but at the moment, it appears we're in one of those uh, patterns where the high pressure just keeps reinforcing itself within the model output. So you think it's going to start to break down. You think we're going to go into more unsettled phase around here, as you would typically expect in a British summer. You would expect the high pressure to break down and the weather to turn thundery and then the Atlantic to push through. That looks like what's going to happen there on Sunday the 1st of July. But actually, it doesn't really come to anything. So but by Wednesday the 4th of July, we've gone out beyond day 10 now, of course, but by Wednesday the 4th of July, we're actually back to the high pressure from the Azores, ridging up towards Scandinavia, and that's just keeping things very dry, the fungi breakdown probably is quite limited, only lasts a day or two, uh, and then we're back to very warm and dry conditions again as we go uh, through that first week of July, and so that's how we end that particular GFS run with high pressure ridging from the Azores up to Scandinavia. Uh, and that's a really stable uh, and strong ridge that we've got going on there. But we'll be bringing more very warm or hot weather across much of the country. So there's no sign of a sustained uh, breakdown 
uh, Tubis pattern within the next fortnight uh, on that particular GFS run. Bear in mind these GFS runs do change from run to run. But signals are there that this is setting up uh, a very prolonged uh, dry and hot pattern. Uh, this is the ECMWF for uh, Saturday again. The high pressure is ridging through the country, cutting off that cooler, fresher air. High pressure is st still sitting there over the country at the weekend, or uh, by the end of the weekend. And into next week, high pressure fest goes on. Eventually, it's drifting a little bit to our east side to pull up these very warm to hot southerly, southeasterly winds. We have got a bit of a thundery low there that's trying to push out of France. We've got a heat low over. Uh, Spain, which you always get in the summer, but it's not until that heat low moves over the um, moist waters of the Bay of Biscay that it starts to do anything in particular. So it's trying to push that heat low out of Spain and get it over Biscay, uh, where in a normal situation it would develop into a proper area of low pressure and then push northwards and bring thunderstorms to the UK with classic Spanish plume. That's trying to take place there through the middle of next week. But uh, you just see that actually what happens if that low pressure is kept at bay down over Spain, it just remains as a heat low, doesn't pick up moisture over Biscay, and we just keep this high pressure uh, going through to day 10, that is a chart for day 10, which is Saturday the 30th of June, and again, a little bit more of that uh, thundery low starting to develop around Biscay now, so we have a natural area of low pressure that is going to, we'll be trying to bring thundery weather up from the south, but this ridge here is uh, fighting it off at that point up to day 10. We don't know how that would progress if we could go out beyond day 10. It's possible we will see the ridge pulling back a little bit Scandinavia and allowing this thundery low to move up from the southwest. But uh, certainly to the end of June, you have to say the charts are looking very dry and hot through the course of uh, next week. Well, I have a look at Beijing Climate Centre for the next 40 days. Then, so these are 500 millibar he uh, heights. They're broken down into 10 day periods. The first 10 day period will take us from the 21st uh, through to the 30th of June. So, the coming 10 days essentially sees this ridge intensifying close to the country. Low pressure and the jet stream being pushed up to our north, going up there. And so essentially, it's a ridge that's taking over pattern. Tony things increasingly dry and warm in the coming 10 days, as we know. We go through to the next 10-day period, and uh, we've got above average heights almost centred over the top of the country from the 1st through to the 10th of July, with below average heights in the Atlantic, the jet stream and the flow going like that. So again, that looks mainly dry and warm, possibly a little bit more of an influence from this low pressure in the Atlantic that might be trying to threaten uh, thunderstorms. So maybe at some point, remember it's a 10 day anomaly, so at some point through that 10 days, it's possible we would have a thundery interlude, essentially for the 10 days overall, it's high pressure that's in control. And then look at that, we go through to the 11th, through to the 20th of July, and the high pressure is intensifying close to the country. So it's over top of the country, and that would be very warm and dry conditions there. And then we go through to the final 10 days of July, and that's the 21st through to the 30th of July. And no real change with the above average height still centred over the top of the country. By this point, if this is right, by this point, We've got to the end of July and we still have high pressure pretty much centred over the top of the country. So not only is this indicating a very hot July, it's also indicating, perhaps quite worryingly now by this point, end of July, remember, it's gone on for quite a long time because uh, it's been dry through the spring as well, or through the late spring anyway. Um, so high pressure is continued to be sitting there over the country to the end of July and by that point I would think we're talking about a drought uh, really we are in proper drought conditions I would have thought and uh, that would be bringing quite severe problems I think to agriculture uh, in particular so we could be shaping up here for something that is really quite concerning actually now as we get through to the end of July it's just a suggestion it's a, it's a long-range model they are as ever, prone to chopping and changing, and uh, they are prone to wild swings, really. So it's only a, an indication, just a hint, that uh, we might be shaping up here for quite a worrying pattern uh, as we go through this summer. Not only very warm, hot, but also potentially really, really dry. 
Now, if you enjoyed today's video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So thanks very much for doing that. If you would like to become a patron for Gazworthies, I'll leave the link to our Gazworthies Patreon page in the description box at YouTube. And this is the Patreon page. So you can come to this page and become a patron for Gals of You just give us a monthly donation. And it could be anything from just $1 a month. So uh, just $1 a month you can become a patron for Gals of These. And thanks so much to everybody who has done that for us so far. And then there's also the PayPal page, which you can uh, give a one-off donation through to uh, Gals of Again, I'll leave the uh, link in the description box of YouTube. All the pages that take Gals of is linked to the Patreon and gas of its PayPal pages as well. And a big thank you to all of our donors and patrons uh, for supporting gas of its and uh, helping us to bring you this content. So uh, that's how it's looking, and it looks like uh, if the longer range stuff is... Well, let's deal with the next week, 10 days. So we're going to get a heat wave next week. It's increasingly probable that temperatures will be rising substantially through the course of next week, and it's not out of the question that we could see temperatures going up close to 90 Fahrenheit through the course of next week. So uh, with that, it's also going to be very dry. That takes us to the end of June, and then the hints are there from the Beijing Climate Centre anyway that this could well go on through July if it does obviously we're talking about a classic hot summer uh, but uh, a little bit concerning if you have uh, if you're involved in agriculture for example if you're a farmer or a grower then um, it does look as though very dry conditions could continue right the way through into the uh, main part of the summer of 2000 and 18. It's only a snapshot, so it could be that the model is just taking this warm and dry weather and going over the top with it, and July will actually alleviate the dry spell, and we'll get more thundery episodes coming along. Um, let's just wait and see where it's going, but certainly next week it's going to get really warm, uh, and also staying very dry. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.